Hi, and welcome to Smoke Training. In this episode, we'll explore adding basic effects to our timeline. First, we'll get a quick overview of the timeline effect process. We'll look at different ways of applying timeline effects and show you some handy ways to store favorite effects to use later. In this introduction to timeline effects in Smoke 2013, we'll take a look at the process of adding effects to your edits. First, let's just have a brief overview of timeline effects in Smoke. In Smoke 2013, the process of applying effects to your editing timeline has been greatly simplified. A new effect area has been placed directly above the timeline that appears only when you're working on shots with effects. To see it in action, let's move the timeline positioner over a clip that contains some effects. The effect area has now been updated to show that this clip contains timeline effects. Each effect type has been added appears as a button in the effect area. Starting with your source image displayed here as a thumbnail, a chain of effects get added to your clip, finally creating the result image. A blue light to the left of an effect button indicates that the effect is currently visible. An effect can easily be turned off or on by simply clicking the blue light. This ability to mute and unmute effects directly from the timeline is very useful when building and experimenting with creative ideas. Now let's take a look at how we actually add effects to our timeline. In FCP7 you would either use the effects menu at the top or you would go into the effects tab of your project browser. In Smoke 2013 it is so much faster to apply effects to your timeline. You don't even have to leave the timeline work area with your cursor. In the effects area located above the timeline, click the FX button. The pop-up effect ribbon appears letting you choose from the different available types. By clicking on any of the effect buttons, it immediately applies to your timeline segment. The basic set of parameters for the effect are then displayed across the central effects area. In this case, we chose a color corrector effect, which then displays a basic set of controls to help adjust the image. While it appears as only a simple set of controls suitable for quick adjustments, every timeline effects element that can be applied has an advanced editor. Located here at the left of any effect controls added to the timeline is where we enter the advanced effect editor. Now this exposes the full set of available controls for the effect. To exit the advanced editor, click exit. You can also right click on a timeline segment and choose add effect. This reveals the video effects ribbon directly above your selected clip in the timeline. Or possibly the fastest way to add a timeline effect to your clip, use the keyboard shortcut control tab. The only thing to be careful of when using the keyboard shortcut is that Smoke will activate the video effects ribbon over the selected clip. Here in this example, the effect ribbon is activated for the clip at the end of the timeline, not the clip which the timeline indicator is over. So after adding an effect and making changes, if you do not see any results, it is because your timeline cursor is not parked over the selected segment. To see a before and after view of your clip, the effects can be temporarily turned off. Click the blue light to turn off the effect. Click again to turn it back on. Deleting an effect from the timeline can be performed in a number of ways. Here, at the end of the effect bar, we can press the delete key. This will remove the current selected effect. Any other effects on the segment will still remain. You can also delete an effect by clicking the effect title and dragging to the bottom of the screen. Release when you see the trash icon. Option clicking on an effect process will also remove an effect. And if you're after the fastest way to remove all timeline effects from a segment, right click the segment in the timeline and choose Remove all effects from the pop-up menu. Quite often when applying effects such as color correction, we want to apply the same look to other shots. First, let's make the video track larger by clicking and dragging downwards between the video and audio tracks over in the track header area. Now we can see all of the effect processes that have been applied to our timeline. It's indicated by the small icons with the blue lights. By clicking on an individual effect icon and dragging it to another shot in your timeline, this will copy the setup. You can now use this as a starting point and modify it to suit the shot. If you drag an effect to another shot that already contains the same type of effect, for example color corrector, it will replace the effect in that segment, not add to it as is the case with FCP7. 
It is also possible to drag the individual effects from the effect bar onto a new shot. A great feature is that you can save your timeline effects directly to your project in the media panel so that they can be reused when needed. First, let's keep things organized. Create yourself a suitable folder structure inside your project. Now, with a segment selected in the timeline, drag one of the processes located on the effects bar and drop it into a folder in your project. This new item in your project has a different icon to indicate that it is actually an effect. It will take on the name of the edit sequence, so make sure you give it a new title. That was just saving an individual effect to your project. Smoke also lets you save multiple effects into one item that can be stored and then later applied to other clips in your timeline. Select the first item in the effect bar. Now hold down shift and select the last item. Now that you've selected every effect process, drag any one of the selected items towards a folder in your project. As you can see, multiple effects are on the end of the smoke cursor. Let go when you're over the desired folder and then retitle this pack of effects into something recognizable. To apply any effect that you've stored in your project, simply drag the item onto a segment on the timeline. After applying effects to your timeline, you'll notice a dashed line along the top of the segment. Depending on your system, Smoke may be able to play back the segment to some extent, but you may also experience dropped frames. To see the applied effects in real time, you'll need to render the segment. With the segment selected, hit the Render button located up in the Effects bar above the timeline. Once the render has completed, the dashed line changes to a solid line, indicating that rendered effects will play back smoothly. And the fastest way to start the render process? Use the backslash key. Smoke will not perform a render if there is no item selected, so here's a quick way to make sure your timeline gets rendered. Click on the video track header, and as you can see the whole video track is now selected. Use the backslash key, and Smoke will now process any of the segments that require rendering. Just a quick reminder that Smoke 2013 is currently pre-release software, so features and screens seen in this episode may change come the final release. Make sure you select a clip segment before applying a timeline effect to make sure it gets added to the intended segment. Copying an effect from one clip to another is as simple as dragging one of the effect buttons from the effect bar onto another segment. Deleting a single effect is done by option clicking the title in the effect bar, or to quickly remove all effects from a clip, right click the segment and choose remove all effects. And a great way to store your favorite effects for use later, simply drag the effect title located in the effect bar and drop it into a project folder. That brings to a close this episode of Smoke Training. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for future episodes of Smoke Training that get you up to speed on the basics fast.